Yes, you are absolutely right. I couldn't have put that better myself. There is no possible way that anyone would ever disagree with that. Boy, that was an introduction. Uh, we're going to talk today about the idea of being right or the disaster that is confirmation bias. That's a little bit more heady, but I wanted to say that anyway. We're going to talk about um, sort of divisiveness and being right and what you think of those other people over there. Now, what I want to um, get started on, and we all do this um, pretty constantly. We're, we're seeking out people who agree with us and also diminishing through lots of different ways people who don't agree with us. And so consider, <laughs> in light of Christmas, and Thanksgiving is not that far off, are any certain topics off limits at family gatherings? Maybe you don't. I mean, maybe you have the perfect family and you guys talk freely about any and everything. But there are usually, most usually, certain topics that we're just not going to talk about because that person over there uh, is wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be as, uh, um, what's the word? Abra abrasive? I don't know if it's abrasive. Whatever. Anyway, that person over there is wrong. They're just, insert your adjective there. And if they knew what you knew or saw the world the way that you did, then they would surely agree with you. Right? What, I, what I'm trying to illustrate is that when you are forced through familial relationships, um, either through marriage or through uh, literal blood, when you are forced to be together with people who may not and probably don't, certainly don't share your opinion on everything, um, probably don't share your opinion on the major things, we'll come to that at the end, you just sort of agree to tread lightly. In other areas of your life, now contrast that with other areas of your life, the um, websites, forums, do people know what those are? <laughs> Reddit, maybe you don't know what that is. Anyway, whatever. Uh, the websites that you visit, the news stations, websites, apps, whatever, that you choose to listen to, um, you choose because they agree with you. I'm just going to call it like it is. Uh, they, though, though, those people see the world correctly, rightly. Those are the smart people, and all the rest of the people are, insert that same adjective, right? You go to those places, you listen to those people because they agree with you. When you have a choice about, I'm going to listen to this news station and I hate that news station over there because um, that news station is full of adjectives, that is confirmation bias. And, and really, it, this isn't the issue, but it's an issue. It's a form of self-justification, right? Which in the church is like a bad thing because Jesus is the one who justifies. This, it's not the issue, but it's an issue. You are trying to justify yourself. You want to know that your opinions are the, there's lots of air quotes, there's going to be lots of air quotes today, that your opinions are the correct ones. And every time that you go to that news station, and you don't go to that news station, they're agreeing with your opinions. And what this causes is, um, is, is sort of se segregation, not, not in the 1950s sense of the word, but uh, division, 
right? This causes division. Okay, now what I want you to do, and you can pause the video to do it, or you can, if you're watching on a computer, you could just open another tab. Wow. If you're on your phone, you're toast. Um, unless you're smarter than I am, which is almost certainly the truth. But anyway, I want you to open a uh, browser and go to Google, and I want you to type in the coronavirus is. Now, I'm not going to talk about the virus at all, and I don't care what comes up, but you need to go to Google to do this. And the reason is when you type in the coronavirus is, it's going to have that drop down of all those things. And it's going to have a bunch of ways that it suggests you complete that sentence. Now, again, I don't care what those ways are. That's not the point. The point is that a machine, well, the machine was developed by people, but that's a whole nother thing. The point is that um, the people who have developed this machine are, I will say, unintentionally, because um, again, that's this is going to be a whole separate video at some point, unintentionally segregating, dividing the population, showing you the corner of the world that agrees with you, right? The coronavirus is whatever. Now, some of those you might not agree with, and you're not going to click on those. But the more, especially if you do it on your phone, I'm sure the results are going to be, excuse me, much, uh, that, that this is going to be much closer to the truth than if you do it on like your computer, because you're on your phone all the time. And your phone knows basically everything there is to know about you. So what it's going to show you are things that you probably agree with. Ways to complete the coronavirus is with ones that you would agree. And if there's ones that you don't agree, that's fine. But the point, the point that I'm trying to make is those results are specific for you. If maybe even another member of your um, immediate family, but if a friend or like a coworker typed in the coronavirus is, they would almost certainly receive a different set of completions for that phrase. And what this serves to do is, is to, again, segregate people. And we're going to kind of come back to this idea um, segregation is bad. We kind of got rid of it. Now, again, I'm talking about a different type of segregation, but it, it's dividing us into, into us, the, the smart people and those other people over there who are, insert your adjective. It's showing you it's, um, through your own in intentional actions and through the uh, world that you inhabit, you are, are kind of being drawn into this private little cluster of people who agree with you. Now, what you think is that everyone <laughs> agrees with you, right? You're, you're in this little, this little private corner of the world. You're way over, you're way over there. You're in this little private corner of the world and you think that you've got the whole, everyone, everywhere I go, they're saying the same thing. Everything that I read agrees with me. I must have the right position. Not realizing that you've been shoehorned into, into a, corner of the world and there's lots of people who see the world insert adjective i mean how do you consider those other people that's kind of the issue um the division but mostly how you relate to other people especially those people those people on that news station who are always saying the wrong stuff those those people who are wrong on the internet and thank you for providing a community service and trying to straighten them out because if they just were more adjective um your little corner of the world would still be your little corner of the world i mean that's not going to change but anyway the point is um almost we're almost at the point how you relate to other people because this uh, everything that I have said serves to entrench you in your position and make it 
basically impossible to see another side of the issue. Now, quite famously, I'm not going to talk about any example because I don't want to get, again, entrenched in any example. I'm going to talk in kind of broad generalities. And I do that for the sake of um, whenever you use an example, examples serve to both strengthen and defeat the point that is made. Because examples come with countless extra entanglements. And you can make, again, this is this is the basis of um, conversing and arg ar arguing not in the da 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 sense, but in the tell me friend what you think about sense, which no one ever does anymore. Um, but examples serve to both help and defeat because they illustrate a portion of your point, but there are these extra entanglements which, which you cannot address every entanglement. I'm getting into a tangent that I don't need to be in. But anyway, I'm not going to bring up an example. Um, the, what, what I want to, to talk about is that the issue is not the issue, right? So think about whatever thing that you and your tiny corner of the world agree upon and all the rest of the other people are adjective, wrong, ignorant, stupid, different, are right? Well, they can't be right because you're right. And, and we're treating other people uh, badly. <laughs> now, my call is not to save the world through polite internet comments. People are just going to keep being people. But my point is for you to treat other people as um, people redeemed by Jesus. People, people who are worthy of, no, 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 I don't want to say that. People who have received the Father's love and that you probably shouldn't hate people that God loves because that would mean that either you are right and God is wrong, which I'm sure is not the case, or that God is right and you are, well, you're not wrong because that whole corner of the world agrees with you. So that's an interesting predicament. Hmm, if God sees something differently than you. That is interesting. Could it be possible that the issue isn't the issue and that instead there is a profound misalignment of how you see the world versus how another person sees the world? And again, here is where an example would be very helpful to illustrate this point, but an example would also be extremely harmful because I would have to walk through every possible iteration of that example and all the countless little thingies that are tied to that example. So I'm going to again refrain from bringing up an example. But consider when you have last argued, not over the internet, because that's just, don't argue on the internet. I mean, come on. But when you have last argued with another actual live human being standing in front of you, what typically happens is, oh, and especially when we do it uh, among Christians, you, I have my Bible handy. You open the Bible and you're like, right here, read this sucker. Or maybe you call them even worse names. God says, God, and then they go, no, you're wrong. And they yeah, flip the Bible and they're like, you read this, right? Um, God seems to be divided on this topic. Well, that, that's not, because the issue isn't the issue, right? There, There's a, 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 um, a misalignment between even how the two of you see God's word. Now, again, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of getting into an example, but, but not quite. I'm, I'm towing the line, the example line. How, how you see things is just different from how this other person sees things. Again, think about my, my example that's not quite an example. When you type into the search bar, the coronavirus is. It's going to show you most likely 
things that you agree with. But that's not the issue. Those are conclusions and you have, uh, you live and act in such a way, you see the world in such a way that you are ig ignorant of. Um, and those lead you to certain conclusions. Now, the difficulty in conversing with another human being is that you're both conversing at the conclusion level when, when really you can't even agree on the meaning of words. You can't agree on uh, the important parts of the issue. What, what things should we talk about? You probably can't even agree. There's a profound misalignment between people. And so when you visit that news site, that news site sees the world in such a way and the things that they the things that they report on versus not report on are a reflection upon of that way that they view the world. And and you go to this news site cuz those news sites are that those news sites are a bunch of adjectives. But those news those people at that news site have a different way of seeing the world and so will report on or will not report on things that are different, right? But all we talk about is the conclusion level. You should think this. No, you should think this. And, and we're so far afield from each other um, that we can't, if we disagree upon anything, we are completely undone. Like the 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 realization of disagreement is utterly undoing to our being we can't just say you know what friend we see things differently and keep being friends we have to like psh, sever the connection we're not going to talk about religion and politics those are the two things that families don't talk about because everybody disagrees upon religion and about politics and even what are included within the bounds of those words, right? You have this standing rule that you're not going to talk about religion and politics and yet someone is talking about politics because they don't think what they're saying is within that realm of politics. Do you see how misaligned we are? We can't even agree upon what is included in the word politics or in the word religion. We are a profoundly misaligned people. All right. Fire and brimstone is nearly over. Here we go. Jesus said something about seeking first his kingdom. One of the things that Jesus' kingdom does is provides a worldview, a way of looking out at life, creation, activities, religion, and politics. And I won't use the word making sense of them. I will say seeing them in perspective, seeing them in perspective. The reason I say that is that we, we actually have a great deal of freedom in how we engage with the world. Now, to be sure, there are certain boundaries that God has placed upon us that you can't go over there because that is just too far afield. But there's this whole uh, realm in which we can operate. What sort of clothing should we wear to work? Um, how should we raise our children? In what way should we worship God? Now, there are wrong ways to do all of those things, but there's plenty of reasonable ways to do all those things. The point is not those things. The point is those things in perspective. And the point is keeping the ultimate thing. Here we go. Here's the, here's the point coming up. The point is keeping the ultimate thing, the ultimate thing, and that would be the resurrection. You're probably not surprised that I brought that up. I'm kind of a resurrection preacher. The point is Christ's final judgment day, bringing all of his people back from the dead and living with them 
forever. Everything that we do should be framed in light of that day. Everything that we do. When someone d disagrees with us about X stupid thing that ultimately doesn't matter, that's okay. Now, if somebody disagrees with us about the resurrection, that's, that's kind of a serious thing. And we should uh, uh, do what we can <laughs> to help them put into perspective the ultimate importance of the resurrection. Um, and then working from there, see all of these other examples. The reason that I bring this up is a lot of the stuff that seems so important is ultimately meaningless. I use those two words very carefully. Ultimately meaningless. The only ultimately meaningful thing is the resurrection. God doesn't God doesn't care what news site you visit. I mean, if you're visiting like well, see I can't even say this. <laughs> if what you are doing is causing you to lose perspective of the resurrection and focus on the conclusions, then that's a problem. But you do have a great degree of uh, freedom in how you interact with the world, what you do in relation to the resurrection, and, and also to um, allow others that same freedom that God has given them. I suppose I could say a lot more upon that, but I suppose I'll have to do that at a different point. The dangers of confirmation bias is, is that you're sequestered in your tiny little corner of the world, thinking that you're right and that all of the other people are adjective. The greater danger is that you use that as the dividing line between good people and bad people when the dividing line is the resurrection and everything that we do should be done in pursuit of that promise like believing in jesus worshiping jesus telling other people about jesus and should be done to to help continue focusing upon that. The other stuff is ultimately meaningless. And we don't need to segregate ourselves on these ultimately meaningless topics. I think that's it. Seems like I summed that up pretty well. Anyway, um, I'm just going to stop. There's a lot more that could be said, but that's all right. I usually reach a point where I'm like, eh, I'm out of words. And today I definitely did. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope that you find value in these reflections. Uh, a a this one was not so much opinion. They, they have been a little opinion-y. This one was more uh, telling you how it is. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm glad that you come and give me your time. Time is so, so valuable, um, very valuable. And, and I appreciate every time that you do spend these 24 and counting minutes with me. So I appreciate it. I thank you for that. And God's blessings, God's peace be with you. That's the one I wanted. I'll see you next time.